Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Firebase Cloud Functions, which is yet another service that Firebase provides. Beginners, when they hear about Firebase, they're usually first exposed to the database part, whether the Cloud Firestore or the Firebase real-time database. Other than that, they often use authentication to manage their users or storage to manage their media and or other types of files. Well, here we're going to talk about something different, and that is Cloud Functions. So this is a screenshot of the homepage for Cloud Functions on the official Firebase website. What they're saying here is that Cloud Functions will enable you to run your mobile backend code without managing servers. What does this mean? Let's dissect it. So here they're telling you that you can write some code for your backend, for your mobile or web apps, and then you can run these and execute them without managing any server. Now, a while back, whenever you had to create a website on the internet, you needed to actually manage some servers. Later on, we had cloud computing, and now we have a subset of cloud computing, which is the serverless architecture. So what does the serverless architecture mean? Here, you're essentially saying that some cloud provider, be it AWS, Microsoft, Google Cloud Platform, they will take care of the servers. So they will handle all the heavy lifting. They will have these huge data centers in which their servers exist. And what you will do is that you will utilize the resources of these servers. And then you will pay for what you use. So for example, I used a very small amount of computing power, I will pay a very small fee. Meanwhile, someone else who has a company that used a very large amount of power, a large amount of resources, a large amount of storage space, they will have to pay much more. So essentially, this serverless architecture allows us to pay as we go. And this is very good for scaling because then you can start very small and scale up as your company gets bigger. And of course, here you have to take care of your own code, so you will write the logic for it, but the resources will be managed by this cloud provider. And of course, these are actually, there's some type of buzzword around them recently, and that is the functions as a service. So the functions here are essentially a service provided to you by these cloud providers. Now, each of these cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft, and Google have their own types of functions. But of course, this video is about the Firebase cloud functions. So. Let's sum it up. Firebase cloud functions, you will execute code on the cloud. And then in this case, Firebase or actually Google behind the scenes, because if you didn't know this, Google owns Firebase, they will handle the servers, they will handle managing the resources, and all you need to do is just execute your code. And of course, they will also handle things like security. So that this makes it much easier for developers to create these applications without much of a hassle. So what are some examples of functions? Well, these are taken from some Firebase documentation and some of their examples. So I will link, I will put a link in the description, which you can go to. It's an open source GitHub repo with a lot of examples to get you started with functions. Otherwise, I can also create some video tutorials on some new types of functions on this channel. So some examples, let's say when I have a new entry to the database, I want to update the text to be all uppercase. So let's say I have an app and I'm inserting some text to the database. And here, what I will do is whenever the database is updated, so there's a new entry, what I'm going to do is I will simply update all the text to be uppercase and add the new version to the database. So this is a function, it will execute on the cloud. Some other examples, let's say you add a new user to the database, you will update a user counter variable or a new user is authenticated, you want to send them a welcome email and a new, a new image is added to storage, you will create a thumbnail for it. So all of these functions will execute on the cloud, on the servers provided by Firebase, and all you need to do is call these functions. So you need a way to call these functions. So how can I call these functions? Well, as you can see at the bottom part of the screen here, we have three ways of calling these functions. Firstly, you can directly call them from an app. So here you would create a callable function and this function could be called from your app. So when you write a mobile app or a web app, you will call this function and it will execute on the cloud. You can also schedule execution. So you can set a certain time or a certain um, scheduling algorithm to actually schedule these functions and have them get executed. Or finally, you can get them triggered by events. So this is really important. This enables us to create event-driven applications. Now, what do we mean by events and what are we really talking about here? So event-driven approach. Here, we're referring to triggers. We have two main types. The first type is Firebase-related events. 
So here, we will respond to events created by Firebase services. For example, the database, the storage, the authentication, the stuff I mentioned at the beginning of the video. For example, I will create a new user from my application. So a new user signs up. So here, a new user is added to the authentication system. The onCreate event of authentication is triggered. This will cause the function to get triggered and to get executed. So here, the function is waiting for this trigger. Once the trigger occurs, the function will get executed. And we said before, an example of this is when a new user signs up, send them a welcome email or a ver verification email. So this will execute when the onCreate part of the authentication happens. So when this event occurs. Some examples of these events are, let's say, on create, on write, on update, on delete in the database, in Firestore. So whenever something is modified in the database, I'm going to execute my function. So a certain type of function. You have also on finalize in storage. So when I finalize an upload of a file, I can then execute a function. For example, I upload an image. And then when I get an image, I want to convert this to a thumbnail. And I can do all of this in the cloud within a cloud function. So this is the first type of events. These are Firebase related events. They could also be Google services related, but I'm not going to go too into that. It's a bit more advanced, but essentially that's what it is. Another type of events is HTTP requests. So here we're going to respond to these HTTP requests and then the function will get triggered when we perform a request. So here we're using, of course, the HTTP methods such as get, post, put, and others. An example of this is I will send a GET request to my function endpoint and then the function is triggered, obviously, and it will execute on the cloud. So I could have a function that performs all sorts of things. I send a request and that's when it gets executed. So this is what we mean by trigger. It occurs after something happens. So what are some cool things you can do with functions? So I talked a little about how they work, event-driven approach. What can you really do with them? Some more advanced stuff. Let's say you want to do some type of image processing. For example, you want to detect and blur offensive images. So anytime a user uploads an image that is offensive, you can use the Google Cloud Vision API to detect it, blur it, and put it back in storage as a blurred image. So obviously here you did a lot of processing all on the cloud. So here you're not doing it yourself. You're not doing it within your own app code. You're doing it somewhere else. So it's not happening on the device of the person executing it. Another thing you can do is you can handle notifications. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here because you can actually use cloud messaging for this, but this is not within the scope of the video. Other things are third party plugins. So here you can set up payment systems such as PayPal or Stripe. You can use Slack. So for example, let's say whenever something happens within the app, you want to send a Slack message to the developer. You can do that inside your function. The thing you can do is you can integrate Google Cloud Platform with Firebase. So here your functions can call some services that are provided by the Google Cloud Platform. So you know how I said that Google actually owns Firebase. Well, here you go. So for example, I can call the Translate API. So let's say whenever a user types something in a foreign language on my app, my cloud function will call the Google Translate API, translate this text, and then add it to the database, which is another idea of something you can do with functions. Obviously here you can go from very simple things like converting text to uppercase to very advanced things to using these third, third party plugins or the Google Cloud. I am happy to make tutorials on these things and more tutorials on functions. So this should be really exciting for developers and definitely makes life much easier as you build serverless applications and you use other people's cloud for your backend and makes everything so much easier. So finally, I'm going to sum it up with some talk about pricing. So of course, for every developer interested, they might be interested in the pricing so that they can evaluate whether this is really worth it or not. Now, unfortunately, in the Firebase Spark plan, it's not available. So if you have a free Firebase account with no credit card set up, you will not be able to use cloud functions. However, don't be super disappointed because you can actually use it for free within the Blaze plan. So the difference is here that you have to actually set up a credit card for the Blaze plan in case you do actually um, have to pay. But Blaze plan itself is pay as you go. So as long as you consume within the free limits of Firebase, you will not have to pay anything. You just have to kind of set up a payment system and not really use it. So how much is actually free? What is free is 2 million invocations. So if you invoke the app 
uh, if you invoke the function two million times, you do not have to pay anything. So anything under this number is totally free. There are other metrics that are involved with measuring how much you have to pay, but essentially for simple functions, you will not have to pay a ton. So here, if you're only working with the database and the storage and other Firebase services, you will likely not have to pay as long as you're under 2 million times the function is invoked. Now, to give you some overview of some calculations, 20 million invocations will lead to paying about roughly $8.8. .8. 90 million, you'll have to pay $35. So I got these numbers from the official Firebase pricing calculator. So I will link this in the description as well if you're interested, if you're uh, trying to develop an app and you kind of want to see how much you have to pay. But essentially, this is an overview of the pricing. As long as you're under this 2 million mark, as long as you have some simple functions, you can get away with not paying any money. Obviously, if you're in the learning stages, you will definitely not have to pay anything so that's really it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it useful let me know if you want to see some tutorials on cloud functions i'd be happy to make them and yeah that's really it bye bye